It is the We Are You Morning Crew. I am George Daigle. You're in the right place to get the sizzling subjects and the trending topics. Good morning to you, you, and especially you. Hope you're having a great day and a good morning wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I'm glad you're doing it with us. And make sure you tune in to us in all of the places that you can listen to. My goodness, sometimes I surprise myself and find out that we're in a new place. I didn't even know we were there. You can listen to our podcast on 11 different platforms. Just found that out last night. Uh, you can also listen to us on iHeartRadio, on our We Are You Radio website, and the We Are You Radio app. Just look for it in your devices store. In the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, he is here. The genius, see how it did that, behind Real Life Reality, the YouTube channel. If you have not tuned into it, you are in for a treat. It is black queer artistry, philanthropy, uh, and mayhem all in one place. The genius behind that is the one and only Gregory Ruffin. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing this morning, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you were able to make it in. Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you for having me. Hey, no problem, man. It is absolutely a pleasure. Now, I want to first address yesterday. um, We were supposed to have a guest as well. Mm. And um, um, they weren't able to be here. And um, so... Yeah, I tell him he need to definitely reach out to you about that because I didn't like that. Yes, sorrows and prayers, prayers and sorrows. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, we are here today, and we'll talk about it. See how I did that? I did it gingerly. <laughs> I did it the uncle way because I know they're listening. Still love for you, uncle. Just want you to know. But right. yeah, we need to get that together. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, let, let's talk. Let's talk about this, man, because you came about this uh, kind of a, in a roundabout way because you started out with nonprofit and philanthropy in your mm-hmm. background. Yeah, let's talk about that. As well. So yeah, so what I do for like, I guess my nine to five work, I do nonprofit consulting, which is needs nonprofit. You can visit our website, you see I do consulting. So I help other people start their nonprofit in terms of 501c3 with the, you know, the government and all of that. So I do all their paperwork. So I started that. So I, I always wanted to do like, you know, when you do that type of work, mm-hmm. helping the community, most people say you have to act a certain way, do a certain thing. So I was so fascinated with that where I said I want to show that side but also people living their real life mm-hmm. so that's kind of how that came along yeah so you d- you were doing that in in the nonprofit sector and then began the series mm-hmm. for real life and philanthropy correct yes sir. say that th- 10 times real fast y'all mm-hmm. it's, it's real a life. tongue yeah, I know. Yeah, right 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 so it was tough when we first def- with that word philanthropy you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's it's a new word for a lot of people mm-hmm. because they're understanding what that actually means uh correct and philanthropy is, is is so many things. It's time, it's money, it's mm. service, it's all of those different things. And that's things. why we chose that word rather than nonprofit. Because like you said, philanthropy is so many things. So mm-hmm. it's not one word. It's, it, it's so many things, so many levels to it. So tell me how you decided to take that background and create the series. I mean, because it, it had to be something that pushed you to say, oh, I could do this. Um, it was like the, t- the top of the pandemic. Um, the uh, pandemic so you know it was nothing you know we was all like in our house so I said okay I, I wanted to do it bef- like a web series before but I wanted to do something different than just like a show about music and different things so I said I want to always have some unique about it but then of course I still want to have that reality show feel so when the pandemic came we was in the house so I was like let me just do it so it was just kind of like that you know the pandemic was a, was a curse and a blessing yeah, at the it same was downtime, time yeah so and people like, were let me do it if people were in their bag and they didn't even know mm, they were in their bag. Part. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so when you decided to do this, because I know a lot of us identify with our community, but then we want to identify with another. What was, why did you choose to to focus on queer philanthropists, artists, and, oh, and the like? Question. Well, it was important for me to do queer and black. So I would tell people for how I de- uh, how I identify I identify black first then the career. So it it was just important for me to have those two elements. So with all of my content, those are like my two base points: mm. black and then of course queer. So it was just that just who I am. That's my core of that. So that's why I wanted to focus really just on that. So I got a lot of people that wasn't black apply for the show too. But I just really for me it just I, I that's just not how. You know, I wanted to be how I wanted to represent what mm-hmm. I do, that mm-hmm. type of stuff. So certainly, I, you know, I, I get it. I get it because you you want to you want to focus on the people that are, are close to you that mm-hmm. you feel th- are underrepresented. Because if we really think about it, um, if it weren't for the web series that we have, the black queer community in reality television for sure 
uh, and in television in general, is really underrepresented. Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. So, it, and then it was shows like Chasing, The Reality, Gemini Film. It was there. So, when I seen them do their shows, I was inspired, like, oh, we, you know, you can really do this. Mm-hmm. So, it was just like, I didn't want to be like them, and like they're talking, but they inspired me to show you that you can really do it. So, I was more impressed with these are queer black people doing this by themselves. That was the inspirational part for uh, for me. So when I seen that, because I had never seen it, because where I grew up at, I grew up in a cult. So we was big up on black. So that's where my black element come from. But of course, when you say cult, I'm I'm a little concerned. Yeah, so like a yeah, we're in a cult. But what we learned in that cult, the importance of doing for self and the point of for black people to be on top, mm-hmm. because we control everything there. Even though we had a lot of other issues, when it come down to black economic issue, we didn't know nothing about police killing people. We didn't know certain things simply because we control our own narrative. Wow. So it's important for doing for self. So that's why I learned that element from. But then of course the fact that I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm queer. I wanted to put that part in. So it was so important for me. Anytime I do something, I have a conversation. I always try to lead with us black people. We should be doing for self because we can do for self. We can control our own narrative. Certainly. Yeah, I, I, I get it. And, I, and that, that's really good. So when you chose these cast members and we're going to talk about the, the latest series, Real mm-hmm. Life and, and rea- uh, Real real Life and Music. I, Ty Valentino beat that into my head, by the way. Real Life and Music. Mm-hmm. Um, how did you choose choose the cast mm-hmm. and, and why? What was the unique about each one of these individuals? So if you um so with real life in music ty valentino cast half most of the cast Mm -hmm. uh when i came with the idea with him and bryson because you remember they was on real life in philanthropy season two so when we had the show they was doing a lot of music and stuff on the philanthropy show so it was always people always just like they didn't you know it was like why they on this show and it's about philanthropy yeah so we was trying to make it work, but of course, if we can have a space where it's just focus on music, then we could just do that. So, uh, like I said, Ty did most of the cast, and he cast uh, Christy, Rebel, I Am Vo, and Lottie. And then I brought Bryson, um, two other people that you, you see now, Leon, Harley, and then, of course, Vay. Yeah. Duble is a very different different type of person. Yeah, he's from PA. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, but think about Vay, though, I think, what I liked about Vey, he was always just up, like, he always tried to get along with everybody. You like, can tell. He didn't want to really you can see it. side, yeah. You so. can see it. You can see it. You can see it. Real Life from Reality is a group of uh, LGBTQ music artists, recording artists, uh, rappers, singers, and, and they're all kind of walking through their journey together. Um, of course, you know, wherever artists are, I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Um, there is going to be some stuff that is going to be said and or done. Now, I want to f- I want to focus on and this is not to beat up on. I'm just talking about what I see mm-hmm. as as an and as a viewer. And I see I, I see Bryson turning into the Phaedra. <laughs> I see Bryson turning into. Do you mean like Phaedra? It's like you ought to always check her story out. Is that part? <sighs> yeah, I kind of knew you were talking about that. Yes, yes. Like it is. <laughs> they say what it is, but is it really what? Is it weird? really what? What you say? I got you. And I think a lot of times. Let me let me defend him at the same time. I think that he's passionate about what he does. Mm-hmm. I think that he's so passionate that he doesn't hear what's coming out. I think that he's so passionate sometimes that he wants to deliver the message and the message comes out. It's in here this way, but when it comes out, it's like, ah. Yeah. And, and I think that if someone like myself were to tell him, yeah, I think you have a lot of experience, but it's it's not what you say. It's how you say it. It's how you deliver it. And I yeah. think that Lottie and and and, and Chrissy and, and some of the others like, yeah, but you you – we yeah, want we yeah. want to hear what you say because like they were saying on the after show we want to hear what you say but bruh yeah it's it's um I've been telling him from day one no one want like you, you can have gold in your mouth or whatever but no one want you to approach them a certain way yeah you can have the answer but if you come to them a certain way nobody want to be a part of it so I would tell him Bryson know a lot of information when it come down to the music game because he have had these experience now he know the black and white. But obviously he need more structure and help because he's been signing a lot of bad deals. Mm-hmm. So 
we can have the knowledge, but if we're not applying it, it does us no good. Mm-hmm. So because you have the information or the black and white, I think sometimes just his approach is just the way he do it. And I sometimes tell him that I don't know if you have this information just to make other people be mad or to apply yourself. Mm-hmm. Not, not, be, um, not to be mad, but to make other people look bad. Yes. Yes. Make you... Uh, one of the one of the things that has been said on the on the show again, real life reality, and we're talking about the series Real Life and Music. If you haven't had the opportunity to just see it, you can go to uh, the Real Life Reality YouTube channel and see the show for yourself. But one of the things that I've heard often on the show, mm-hmm. we're not on the same level. Let me say this: all my to all my babies. Let, let me get, let me get my camera right there. Let me get my camera to all my babies, and I consider you babies because I'm <clears throat> years old. Y'all are all on the same level because no one is a nationally distributed Mm -hmm. artist. No one has a contract that is on a national level. And that's not to say what you're doing is not great and grand and glorious, but I need y'all to stop saying you're not on my level. Maybe you don't have the same level of experiences. Maybe you haven't done some of the same things that I've done. Maybe you haven't been in some of the same places that I've been, but you're all on the same level in that no one is, Beyonce yet. Mm-hmm. Nobody's Nikki yet. Nobody is saucy yet. Mm-hmm. Nobody is Big Freedy yet. And I just want I just want y'all to get that in your mind. I, I think there's so much, especially in, in in black community, we're taught to compete with each other mm-hmm. rather than help each other. And I think if you if that if that was the nucleus of the show, hey Chrissy, hey Lottie, hey Doob, hey V Vo, hey uh Ty, hey Leon, hey Bryson, did I get everybody? Mm-hmm. And karma. Karma. Mm-hmm. Car- oh, yeah. She's rarely seen on yeah. camera. Uh, and karma. Um, let's let's walk through this journey together. I got this part. You got that part. We got this part. But it's also, too, it's, the, it's your intention. It's, in your, mm. it's your intention. Did Bryson get, you know, did he get in the game just for validation or to say to prove? See, this is me. I never want to do something to prove the people wrong that said I couldn't do it because what happened once I prove you wrong, I no longer have that motivation. Mm-hmm. I no, no longer have that drive. So it's important for me to really stay solid to core of what I want to do. Is this something I really want to do? Sometimes people just do things just for the for the cloud of it mm-hmm. versus is this really my passion? So I would tell them, like, is this something you really want to do or are you doing it just to say, I know this and you don't know this to make other people look bad? I think it also has something to do with that. And if that's your intention, no matter what conversation we in, no matter what dialogue we in, those that type those that type of language is going to always come out. You're right. That, that, that's always going to be in the back of people's yeah, minds. It's going to be in the back What's of people's minds. What's your motivation? So, so you make me mad. That type of it's gonna it's gonna come out. So I think it's a lot of you know not just him. It's a lot of that space with a lot of them. It's like, are you doing this because you really want to do this, or it's like for the cloud of it, or because another thing we really big on. I want to prove my haters wrong. Your haters like why that's important? Because right. what happened when you prove them wrong? Right. Do you see how they drive? You 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 would no longer have that drive and thing simply because you doing it to make another person prove another person wrong. And I don't want to be, I don't, I'm not driven by that. And I do not want to be driven by that. I want to do things that I, I want to do things that I can be excellent at. And that's really my passion. Then it is the, we are you morning crew, ladies and gentlemen, great music, great conversation. And today my very special guest is the genius and architect behind the real life reality YouTube channel. Now, if you have not tuned in, it is a series of shows that is featuring the creativity and the uh, life and uh, artistry of black queer creatives. Uh, You can watch Real Life and Philanthropy, which will soon be in its third season. And currently in season is Real Life and Music, which really had uh, a lot of interest to me because that's the platform that we have created here uh, for LGBTQ artists at We Are You Radio. So when I saw Real Life and Music uh, featuring uh, queer black uh, recording artists. I was like, okay, I'm in. I want to see. And some of my favorites are a part of that. Rebel and, and Ty Valentino. Those are, those are my babies. Those are my nephews and or niece, whichever you want want this week, Ty. Um, so I was excited to watch that show. And in watching the uh, the um, the the interaction of all of those of those young people is is really, 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 really interesting. So let, let's talk to uh, Gregory about that and, and how you're feeling so far as this show is developing, because you get to hear everything. You, you're like 
you're like God in some some instances because you hear the confessionals, you see what's on camera, you're in the editing room, so you get the behind the scenes and the front scenes. How are you feeling about the dialogue and and what you're communicating with the show so far? Um, definitely, just I think everybody on the cast, even Leon and Harley, even though they, you know, like after last night's scene, we haven't seen them anymore at this point because they kind of felt like the group was not being that supportive with them and they was always questioning but overall I, I, i'm enjoying it but of course like you said the fact that i'm hearing everything i kind of know how these things gonna possibly play out so you never know by the time we get to the reunion who's gonna be cool who's not gonna be cool because a lot of times a lot of people is getting offended by what people say in the confessionals not the scenes necessary it's a confessional that they're really having yeah 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 problem. because you know in the confessional you <laughs> you 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 feel safe and you say some stuff that yeah, that you're there by yourself right 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 <laughs> right and and so it is what it is but let's let's talk about that reality because one of the character one of the one of the cast members i don't want to say character one of the cast members that really is different to me mm-hmm. and seems a little bit standoffish is chrissy Okay, that's I, fair to say. I feel I feel like Chrissy's in a place where I'm still learning all this stuff, and I don't I don't really want to be around all the rah rah, but at the same time, you need to be around it so you can soak this up and mm-hmm. see what's going on. And I think it's 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 that protecting yourself. I, mm-hmm. I see it. I see it all over all over their face. That you know. I, you know what, rather than be here and be around all of us, I'll just go to the house. But sometimes you have to experience this because if this is the industry you're going to be in, guess what? Mm. You're going to see this and all the time. they're going to have their opinion. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. You yeah. said it in the beginning. They're artists and they're sensitive about their shit. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you're going to have their opinions and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah, and I think that's safe to say about Kirsty. At mm-hmm. the same time, yes. if you notice from episode two, Kirsty got into a rebel be- for taking over someone. So Christy going to have his bits for even though Christy is like not a, a, not one of the main cast, Christy definitely have like he speak his mind. Mm. Therefore, he's going to be getting into it with a quite a bit of people about Yeah, no, I w- I will say that Christy so does not He's not, not afraid yeah. to do that part, but I totally agree. He's n- sometimes he really is turned off by the rah rah, but mm. like you said, this the, part of it. That's the part of it. If you're going to be a part of that industry, there is going to be a lot of rah rah, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you're going to have to decide how to tune it in and how to tune how it to out. How to tune it out? Yeah, you can be there and not be there. And the more you did, I think by Ty doing the philanthropy show, like you you learn because mm-hmm. and then also too is his first season, so a lot of time a lot of them had to learn like the reality part of. It. I'll tell them, okay, there's the music part about it. But when you film the show, there's the TV reality show part about it. Yeah. So I think that's the part that they kind of like adjusting to. Now, when you chose these people to be on on the cast mm-hmm. uh, for whatever the various reasons were, here's a question on the spot. In five years from now, mm-hmm. where do you see the show mm-hmm. and or the individuals that are now on the show? Mm. So I definitely see the sh- I, I, uh, I definitely still see the show going, but my goal is ultimately to have my own streaming platform. Okay, I want to be with within this five years. What I'm at now, I want to be in my core audience on YouTube, mm-hmm. but I also want to do streaming my own sh- multiple shows. So that's what we've been working on, like multiple shows we have coming. So I see the show still going most definitely, and definitely giving only LGBT artists that platform to showcase their talent and of course them being in a group environment but on our own platform. Now what makes your series and channel different from say Chasing Reality or the others? Um, So for me our slogan is real life regular people relentless stories. I enjoy working with people that have um, that have a regular that most people would consider regular people. So if you watch um TLC channel, you watch a lot of those channels, they focus on more of the the real life aspect, the regular person. If you watch a lot of those, they don't create a lot of stars like the Jocelyn, like Love and Hip Hop. Like you watch Love and Hip Hop, VH1, you have those type of stars. Yeah. Now when you yeah. watch TLC, even though TLC, most people don't know that TLC and all those channels, they beat out Bravo. They beat out VH1 when it comes down to pro, like live views, meaning that um, when they show air, they streaming one million views on in live, live. viewership oh, gotcha, gotcha. versus Bravo probably doing like 
quarter of a million or almost a million because the reality of it is it is more regular people in the world than there is superstar so for me I want to work with those type of people. I want to work with the everyday person that just want to use the platform to grow their brand career, but not looking for like I want to be doing. I want to. I will be in front of the camera. I want to be at the red carpet event. I, that's not me. Okay. I like to work with approachable people. So mm -hmm. that's why my slogan for the entire network is real life, regular people with just relentless stories. So what, what's the, what's the next uh, a phase? Because you got real life and philanthropy. Mm -hmm. You got real life in music. Mm -hmm. So is there something else coming? Yeah, so we have real life in ballroom coming. We start filming that next week. And Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, yeah, real life in ballroom is going to be coming. Um, we're doing a... Last year we did a first look event, right? So we showed real life in music. Um, for the people that did not know it was coming out, it was like a first look, look event I did in December. I invited a couple of web series producers out. They came out, and that's what we did. We dropped the teaser at. So for this year, I want to do, I don't know if you're familiar with BravoCon. I am now. Go okay, ahead. Okay, so BravoCon is a big thing that Bravo do. You know, they have Housewives, they have Vanderpump Rules. So they bring all their stars together. They do like a big convention around all their shows. Okay. So I'm going to do that in December for Real Life Rally. will be a focus on all the real life reality. So we have real life and ballroom coming. We have a dating show coming. We have um, a show like a, a, you know how Yana Fix My Life did it? Mm -hmm. I have a show around that for for people that did web series but feel like the show probably was not as beneficial and it kind of gave them like a mental torture. So I want to do those type of show. Like I said, I want to really do show that's really just focus on regular people and just like their real life. So that's my focus. That's my narrow. So that's what I have coming up. So we real life in ballroom. It's gonna focus on same setup. A group of individual that's in a friend group that love ballroom, but have you know show their real life. Is it, is it a particular house or that we know of? No. no? So yes, I have a, a I have some people in the mainstream and Kiki. Okay. So I I just learned about the Kiki ball because a lot of them that that apply for the show. They in both. I didn't know that you can really be in both. You can yeah. be in the Kiki house, which is like underground, and then you could be in mainstream, which is what we see on, you know, with polls and all of those type of things. Well, I guess one of the questions that I have, and I think we talked about this on the air, on, on the uh, off the air, mm -hmm. is when we look at ballroom now, presently, uh, we see a lot of influence mm -hmm. of mainstream and not mainstream ballroom, mainstream out of ballroom community, mm -hmm. and. Now, because it's becoming so mainstream, we see it on Beyonce's tour. I think, though, that she has a, a more of affinity for the actual people from Ballroom because Honey Balenciaga and, and all these oh, other folks. Oh, yes, yes, I've um, seen it. How, how do you feel, though, uh, with Ballroom becoming mainstream, how that show is going to project? Um, it's, that's a great question. Even when Pose came out, I was kind of like, i seen some episode, but this is my thing, and I would tell people in Ballroom, you shouldn't do nothing ultimately that you give your blood, sweat, and tears, and at the end of the day, when you when it become what it need to become, you can't financially benefit from it. Mm -hmm. so therefore, it do feel like, I'm gonna give you the perfect, Ryan Murphy. What did Ryan Murphy know about Ballroom? Nah. He's the producer around uh, behind Pose. So with it, it seemed like they was letting everybody in to get that, not that, that notoriety, but what happened is the people that put their blood, sweat, and work in and ballroom, will they receive the financial benefit? Right. Or will it just be the producers? Would it be the, you know, Mary J. Bly? What is she doing at the ball? What does she know about being a, a, a you know, I can see her being a special guest, but why was she, why was she one of the judges? She, you know, because let's, let's talk about it. Since, since, since you brought it, because I, you know, I have learned you let your guests say what you want to say. <laughs> So since we're talking about it, right? All right. So that was one of my things. I've never, I've still, to this day, at <clears throat> years old, I have not attended a ball, a real ball, a live ball. Mm -hmm. But I was also of the thought, why are all of these people who are out of community sitting behind the table? I get it. I understand. They want to, and you, it, you want to bring the money in. I get it. Totally get it, and this is this is to no fault of of Miss Lawrence. Miss Lawrence, I love you to to pieces, girl. But Absolutely, he wasn't even a judge. But that's my thing. But she she was, you know, the host. Yeah. yeah. But my thing my thing is, and I want I, I want us to be real real careful, real real careful, mm -hmm. because a lot of times, be LGBTQ artists as well, 
we want to be accepted by the mainstream so much that we will invite them in and invite them in and invite them in and invite them in. And we want them to be a part of it. But before you know it, we want their money. But with their money comes a little bit of 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 the the, the propriety. You, know, you, you got to sign stuff over. You yes. Sign ownership rights. And that's the thing. I'm going to give you the perfect example. What's his name? Um, Andre um, Mizrahi. Um, Mizrahi. Mm-hmm. He have been putting the work in for so, 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 yes. so, so, so long. Yes. So it's those type of people that I want to see ultimately financially gain from this thing. Not the, the Mary J. Blige, not the woman from um, um, P Valley, not all these people. Like we, And that's why I thank God from where I thank God where I ultimately grew up at because we was taught – you create your own table and your own opportunity because I guarantee you if you keep putting the work in and you keep making adjustments, you keep perfecting your craft, they're going to want to come and sit at your table. You're going to get out there and you can do it on your own terms. You can't do it on your own terms if you sign all your rights over already because your thing is at a premature stage. It's okay that it's at a premature stage simply because if you continue to nurture it, it will get where it needs to go. So, no, those are the type of people I feel like should benefit. Those are the type of people I feel like the Andres and those um, people that put a work in, like the Kelly Harris and these people that really got it out the mud, they the ones should have been behind that table. They the ones should have got that big check to do that, not the Mary J. Blige. I don't care because she's a sponsor. They don't mean that. We have to set the standards and the rule for when people deal with our craft, and we haven't done it. And again, I, I, I want to say this because I want I want to be clear because you know I want some of y'all money too. Um, but at, at the same time, we're not we're not saying that we don't want you know the in, the influences of of artists from the outside. But what we're saying to people in community: make sure when the contract is signed, make sure when the negotiations are made, that the community that created the art, the community that put in the blood, sweat, and tears, the community that went and stole their dress to be in the ball. <laughs> They actually benefit from from it and don't just give it away. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's what happened with Legendary. Loved the show, but I think once people see, oh, this is a moneymaker, you got to give a lot of that away. You got to give a lot away. You got to give a lot of equity away. And it's like, at the end of the day, you're like, wow. So I'm really, I'm just doing this for the clout. Mm-hmm. When you really do the look at the paper. I'm doing this for thank you. Thank you, yeah. And it's like, no, because at the end of the day, they're playing you. Mm -hmm. Because anybody that respects you, they would not do you like that. Yes. If people want to get in touch with you, maybe be a part of any of the shows, how do they get in, in touch with you in, in, as casting or any of that stuff? Um, Real Life Reality LLC at gmail.com. That's the best way to get in touch with me. Or on social media, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Real Life Reality. Real Life Reality. Mm-hmm. Now, w- I'm going to ask you a question. Mm-hmm. If you could go back and speak to your 10-year-old self, what would you say to him? Wow, that's, that's a good question. Because I, I guess t- my 10-year-old self probably didn't even think I would be in what sus- outside the cult. Because mm-hmm. you got to remember, I grew up there, so that was my whole life. I'm, I was third generation. So what would I tell my 10-year-old self? Mm. I really don't know. Because to be honest, I really don't even remember my 10 year old self because of the situation I grew up in. Hmm. I, I, just keeping it real, I don't remember myself t- as 10 year old. I started to remember stuff like 12, 13, up before then, I really don't remember. Okay. What would you tell your 12 year old self? My 12 year old self, um, I don't know. Okay. All right, that's that's good. I don't know. Think about that. Think about I'm that. Think about that. Think that's that. good. I, but yeah. I don't know what I would tell myself because I don't think I really. Mm, good question, though. Okay. Good question. All right. That 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 at least, ladies and gentlemen, you know we don't rehearse these questions. Clearly, clearly, <laughs> you see that. You see that. Most people probably don't know that you have a photography background. That you have an affinity and love for that. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm the one in front of the camera though in the photography though. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not behind it. Like I love. Art. I love stuff. I like to do f- like um, that type of stuff. So I miss it, and I on- I only stop doing it because I I do this full time real life reality. But I really like yeah. I love it. I love to do exotic photo shoot, new photo shoot, bizarre, crazy. Put some crazy, you know, not crazy, but just art. I don't like to do just urban. Put on some clothes, urban clothes mm-hmm. Nike shoes. No, I want to do some outside the box, unique, weird. That's my type of style. 
Cool, cool. Photography. So are, are you, are you, do you think you, when you find the time that you'll get back into it? Yes, most definitely. But at first I want to, um, I'm back in the gym because I want to get right. Cause I want to do, I want to, I want to, it's spring, summer. I want to get new. Okay. I want to do some outside. So I want to make sure the body right. So yeah, most definitely. I miss it. I really do. I miss it more than anything. Okay. So the girls are watching. They see the cheekbones. They see the eyes. They see the lips. Huh. Uh, is, is, is Gregory Ruffin uh, um, on the market? Is he available? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. But at the same time, um, yeah, I guess because of what I grew up at, I just have a problem connecting with people on that level. Mm -hmm. I want a family. I want children. I want all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and my theory on how to do that sometimes conflict with the average gay person. Elaborate. Because I ultimately do believe that I'm gay. I, I I acknowledge it. But I do still believe like a man and a woman, based upon science purpose, still need to have sex to procreate. Because let's say all gay people on the earth, if we don't procreate, we exempt. So when I have that conversation, they hear what they hear rather than listen to the facts. And the facts are, at the same time, sex, you, you can only have sex with opposite sex. Two people... Doing what they're doing is not sex because sex is basically procreation. If you're not procreating or you're not in the act of procreation, then you're not having sex. Them are just facts based upon what sex is. So when I begin to have those conversations, I begin to say, I still want the mother in my child life, whether I'm with my partner or not. It's a lot of disconnect with that. So it's so funny you brought that up because I wanted to create an app or environment where it's okay for gay people like myself to say that I want to have sex with a woman for procreate person. I, so I want to create it. I want to create an app or a community around that where, when we talk about procreation, it's not about, do, you know, is I'm attracted to her. It's about I'm doing this for my legacy. I'm doing this because of that. You know, um, I want to continue to give to the world in terms of the human population. So when I have those type of conversations, it usually be a disconnect. So I just well, I I don't I don't I don't know why. I, well. Here's the thing. I don't think that there necessarily needs to be a disconnect. I think it's a, it's a conversation that most people don't have. Mm -hmm. And I think that people outside of community have an ideology of people who think like that. Um, because if you can have sex with a woman, as they would say, then why are you gay? And so there's that there's that whole aspect. So I could get how that yeah. could be uncomfortable for you. But now... Asking you the question since we're just having it, mm -hmm. uh, do you consider yourself bi because you're able to have sex with a woman? And is the sex an attraction sex? No. Or is it just. So, to be honest, okay. I grew up in a cult. Uh huh. Remember, I told you we can't, we couldn't be around women, the yes, girls. Right. They had the boys on one side and the girls. I used to always have sex with women. I got caught, I got a beating, and I've never been attracted to women ever since. So I think I'm traumatized or some type of trauma there because I honestly, I used to have, like, I'm very particular about the guys I like. I like a certain type of guy, so I really don't have a lot of sex with a lot of guys at this point. But with the girls, I had no type. I just like the vagina. Uh, sex, <laughs> so I enjoyed that way more. But after that whooping, I, I don't know. I don't remember what that process was like, but I remember I got caught. Coming out my the, the window, her mom called me and my uncle beat me for that. And after that, wow, I've never been attracted to women. Like it, it don't make my dick hard at all. So, mm -hmm. have you have you spoken to a therapist? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, most definitely. I um I spoke to a couple of therapists. I had a therapist, and yeah, and I'm I'm in um I'm in the process of getting back into that because I got I had got another one like three three weeks ago. I ain't like her attitude. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for a new guy now. Yeah, it's important. And it's I wanted important. a guy, though, too. It was a black woman. And she was just, it was, I don't know, it was off. So I just, I wasn't comfortable. So I didn't I didn't feel like I should continue that. Yeah, it's very important when you when you see a therapist that you make sure that the therapist is in tune with you, uh, with your personality, that they're receptive of your conversation. Because even though they're licensed therapists, every person has mm -hmm. a preconceived idea of uh, uh, or pathology involving human behavior. 
Um, so while they're licensed to do what it is that they do, they're still humanistic. And so mm. you have to make sure that you have that connection and that, that their perception is open to that. I never thought about that, Paul, but that is so true. You're an interesting person. Very, very interesting. And your background probably makes you so unique in, mm -hmm. in, in so many ways that, that yeah. are positive. And, and, and hopefully at some point you're able to, to share your journey dealing with your. I want to do a podcast around being in a cult. Dude. I want to do that. I want to have those conversations because at the end of the day, America is a cult. So when I tell a lot of people from a cult, I get a lot of side eyes and a lot of different things like that. And I would admit that is a reason why I'm different and unique. And I celebrate that. But of course, it did bring a lot of trauma because like I said, how we was raised, we couldn't be around our parents, we couldn't be around our brothers and sisters. So I'm very... I don't have emotions to a lot of things. I don't... So I realized that too at the same time, I want to do a cult around where I, you know my cult but also compare how america is a cult when it come down to us as a whole mm -hmm. so i'm working on that now hopefully i get it out this year so as we continue to move through the episodes of real life and music to my children over there mm -hmm. um what can we expect to unfold so what? you can expect we're going to new orleans for the cash trip and when i say all i'm saying we got put out Oh, no. Yes. You, now, you have to do a lot to get. I am from Louisiana, ladies and gentlemen, and you got and to do a lot. Like you see, uh, right. You got to do a lot get to get that. put out of New Orleans. So we got put out, <laughs> and it go chaos, and it rubble, and Bryson go at it. They really reached their boiling point. And then you also see uh, a fracture in the big three, bow tie and rubble. That turned left, so you really see that. Oh, out, no. So. Not the big not oh. the big three. Not, Throughout the so series, you've been seeing it. yeah, I, I've, I've definitely seen it, and and they were here in the studio, mm -hmm. and they were really uh, 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 reactionary when it came to them, them being them being the big three. Mm -hmm. So, <sighs> let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, how how that dynamic, not necessarily the next episode because I want them to see it, mm -hmm. but how that dynamic has been playing out throughout, and how did they become the big three? Because, like I said, Ty us from the cast, he brought in Christy, he brought in those, but he was more, at the end of the day, he was friends with Vote and Rebel. I think Lottie and Christy was just a recommendation for him. Mm -hmm. I think he knew them, and he was like, they'll be good for the show. But I think his ultimate loyalty is to Rebel and Vote. So that's kind of that happened. And then, of course... Lottie did not know Christy. Lottie and Christy become like this. So everybody kind of got their own little corner. Then you have the big three. Then you have the five, the core five. The core five is Lottie, Christy, Bryson, um, Karma, and um, who else I miss? Um, the, the the other person. Did you say they? They. Yeah. They. Mm -hmm. So they the core five. So the big three. I feel like it's just it was more organic because they they was friends. They okay. They known okay. each other. Okay. But at the same time, like I said. At the end of the season, you'll see, like, you know, after the New Orleans trip, a lot of friendships are tested. Because, you know, staying with a person, traveling with a person, it's much different than us just hanging out. Amen. Glory to God. I'm just saying. I'm you just know, saying. It, it, it come out, and, of course, it's it's going to be some things said. So, hopefully, we'll, they, you know. Well, we got to get on up and get on out of here. Any last words you want to leave with the people? Um, thank you. Thank you. You can follow us on all social media, Real Life Reality. Check out check out our YouTube channel, Real Life and Reality YouTube. And we have a lot of more great content coming and stuff like that. So I'm excited. And I thank you once again for having me. Hey, man, anytime. You guys come on. I cannot wait to the reunion. And uh, we're going to see what that looks like, if that's a mess or not. So we are you for